G'day folks, it's Rob here, and in today's video we're going to be um, covering some of the long-standing aquaponics rules of thumb and a couple of our uh, little ideas that I've tossed in there as well. Uh, primarily this is for folks who are just getting into aquaponics, but for you folks who are, you know, just new to it and have just started a system, a couple of these may help you out as well. So the first rule of thumb, uh, pretty much all, is work out how much space you have for the system before you start building. It may sound silly, but it really does help with a couple of the calculations down the line. You know, you've got to make allowances for things like the fish tank, uh, the grow beds, a sump tank if you're going to include one in the system. Um, allow space for that if you're not tucking it in under a bed. Um, also too, uh, filters if you're going to add any um, solids removal filters in the system to begin with or maybe you might start off without one. So you need to make sure you've got enough room in the area so you can slot that little filter in down the track. And with the grow beds you need to work out um, how many grow beds you've got because they will help you work out how many fish you can actually run in your system. Uh, not only that, you need to make allowances for room to walk around the grow beds, uh, walk around the fish tank and maintain things like the pump in the sump tank. So all these things need to be taken into consideration. Another thing when trying to work out your area where you want to set up your system is what is its aspect in relation to the sun um, through summer and also winter. Uh, what we're trying to do is get at least four to six hours worth of sunlight on the grow beds themselves to help them grow. Uh, if you're in a hotter climate, maybe you want to shade your fish tank or maybe if you're in a cooler climate, you want your fish tank to be in full sun to try and collect some of that heat to keep your fish nice and happy. So rule of thumb number two pretty much all involves the stocking rates for your aquaponic system. Now the amount of fish you can safely keep in a backyard aquaponic system is based on the total media volume in the grow beds as it's these grow beds that perform the all important role of biofilters essentially keeping your fish alive. Now this is why working out the available space for the system and the grow beds in particular is my number one rule of thumb when it comes to getting into aquaponics. Now please don't, and I repeat, do not uh, base how many fish you can keep in your system on the volume of the fish tank itself as some online gurus would have you believe in uh, social media groups. Um, it all comes down to the biofiltration and that all happens in the grow beds themselves. Now, a long-standing rule of thumb for stocking rates is one fish you want to grow out to around 500 grams or one pound, which is considered a table-sized fish, for every 25 litres or 6.6 .6 gallons of wet media you have in the grow bed itself. Now, basically speaking, 25 litres or 6.6 .6 gallons of the suitable media will have enough surface area to house a large enough bacteria colony to process the ammonia produced by most fish species once they reach around about 500 grams or a pound. For you folks who are doing up an DIY IBC based system, if you cut the beds at around about 300 mil or a foot deep, which is another rule of thumb that some will speak of, you pretty much all are going to have enough volume in those grow beds to process the waste of up to 12 fish per bed. Now this recommended ratio is fantastic for anyone starting out in backyard aquaponics. They can be tweaked a little bit um, with different technology and whatnot, but I would suggest uh, that you run a couple of batches of fish through your system before you decide to do too much tweaking and definitely read up any information you can find online. So while we're talking information you can find online, a bit of a plug for myself, I've recently released a backyard aquaponics beginner's guide through the Retrieve platform. Thank you for the help folks. Um, you can find it on a link that'll pop up here and there'll be one down in the description. It's a fantastic little guide. Um, to search content all you need to do is tap a button and enter say grow bed media and you'll get a selection of different results and from there you can tap on something that you think might be applicable to what you're trying to find out. Um, you can scroll through the um, transcript itself, tap on bits of the transcript and it will take you to that section of the guide. There's also captions and I have a couple of new languages added. We now have Hindi and Mandarin Chinese. And to top it all off, you can actually listen to me in those languages as well by tapping the little language button at the base of the video viewer. <laughs> Very excited about this. Uh, thank you to all the folks who have purchased one recently. I really do appreciate the support. And uh, for all you folks who do try it out, I'd really love to know what you think about it. Um, whether below in this um, comment section here on this video or wherever you see this on the interwebs. Uh, so enough plugging of my own bits and pieces. Back to the rules of thumb. 
So the next rule of thumb has to do with the size of the fish tank we need. Now, we've already worked out how many fish we can process the waste from when we did the calculation on the grow beds themselves. Now, with the fish tank, it's pretty simple, pretty easy. You follow the same formula. One fish for every 25 litres or 6.5, 6.6 gallons of water. So that means in an average beginner DIY backyard system with an IBC tank, um, you can raise up to around about 40 fish or 20 kilos or 44 pounds of biomass at a time if you have enough biofiltration that is with the grow beds to process their waste. Please don't, and I cannot stress this enough, please don't throw 100 fish in a 1000 litre or 275 gallon IBC because someone online in a social media group or you've bought plans that said you can do it, just don't do it. I have helped so many people over the years who have followed that advice and within three to four months, they start waking up every morning to a couple of dead fish in the tank. And basically what's happened is um, whoever's given them the idea um, hasn't explained biofiltration with the grow beds. Please just follow my advice, don't do it. It's all about the biofiltration in the bed um, that dictates how many fish you can put into a aquaponic system. So the next rule of thumb involves the materials that you'll be using to make your system. Always make sure that the material is considered food grade and is inert, meaning that it will not affect the pH of the system. Uh, for tanks and beds, HDPE2 plastic or fiberglass are two popular food safe materials you can use. Don't use unsealed concrete. I've seen a few people do that. Uh, basically what's going to happen is over time it will raise the pH of the um, water and you can have issues, not so much with the fish, but with the plants um, getting nutrient lockout. High pH basically means some elements aren't available to them. Uh, likewise, any rock that you're going to use as media within the bed, it's a good idea to give it a pH test first before you buy it and put it in the system. A very easy one is a vinegar test. All you need to do is cover the media with uh, some white table vinegar or cooking vinegar and just wait a while and see if you see any bubbles streaming up from the media itself. If you do see that, um, that's basically the acid in the vinegar breaking down some of the carbon that's in the rocks and releasing carbon dioxide and not a very good media to use. Keep searching for something else uh, that is more acceptable. Uh, River Rock's a good one here in Australia or Blue Metal, which is basically a road base made from basalt. Uh, another thing you can do is uh, just buy the commercial clay like we use here and there's other things like scoria or volcanic rock and expanded shale. Um, they're all pretty much all inert and yeah, fine to use as grow bed materials. Likewise, with your pipe and hose work, check the regulations. I know that the PVC pressure pipe is definitely food grade here in Australia, but yeah, do check with the suppliers in your area as to what's usable. So the next rule of thumb is flow rate of water through the whole system. Uh, what we're basically talking about is um, moving the water from the fish tank through the grow beds so the bacteria can process the ammonia. Now a long-standing um, suggestion is to have the total volume of the fish tank pass through those biofilters at least once per hour. I personally prefer one and a half to two times an hour because it helps get those solids lifted off the base of the fish tank and delivered out into my solids filter. So the next rule of thumb ratio we're going to talk about is air, or more importantly, oxygen for the fish in the fish tank. It's a very basic one. Uh, the ratio we're going to use is the same amount of air as there is water in the tank, must be delivered through there at least once an hour. Uh, what this will do is make sure there is enough to dissolve oxygen in the water for the fish in a sensibly stocked system, even through um, warm periods in the year when the water temperature raises and the water doesn't hold as much dissolved oxygen. So removing solids from the system is my next rule of thumb, and there are many differing opinions on this subject, uh, not only whether you should or shouldn't do it, or how you go about doing it. For me, I like to remove them from the system so they don't get a chance to uh, build up in the grow bed and cause issues down the line. I like to use a radial flow settler myself to remove them as soon as they leave the fish tank. And I do have a video on it and you can um, check it out down in the description after you finish watching the clip. For me, I think it's a good idea to remove them. They don't have to go to waste though. Um, you can put them around a fruit tree, you can put them on your veggie patch, or you can, you know, add it into a little biodigester like we've started up here process those solids, try to mineralize them, get those elements suspended in the water, and then that um, mineral rich water can then be added back into the aquaponic system to boost the growth of the plants. So cycling the system before you add the fish is my next rule of thumb. Uh, this is going to ensure that your first batch of fish will thrive once added to the system, and is highly recommended for any of you folks out there who haven't kept fish before, 
It's a very straightforward process that generally takes between three to 10 weeks, depending on your climate. Um, cooler climates, it can take a little bit longer. Uh, what we're doing is trying to mimic what fish do once they eat food and then release the waste. We're adding in a little bit of ammonia to help feed the naturally occurring oxidizing bacteria that will transfer that ammonia all the way through to the fish friendly nitrate. Uh, now I do have a video on this process as well and you can find a link to that down in the description once we've finished off here. And for the cycling I definitely recommend that you buy a freshwater test kit so you can get daily readings on the ammonia, nitrite and nitrate just so you can monitor the progress and know once the system is finally cycled. Uh, you're going to know when it is cycled when you get zero parts per million of the nitrite probably about up to about 0.5 parts per million of ammonia and a definite nitrate reading in the system. And once those levels stay stable for around about four to seven days, the cycling process is complete and you can get busy ordering your fingerlings for the system. Just a little bit of a tip here, while I'm cycling the system, I like to add in one part of pure sea salt, not table salt, pure sea salt for every thousand parts of water I have in a system. 1,000 litre aquaponic system is very easy. So a 1,000 litre fish tank has one kilogram of pure sea salt. And what that will do is it will guard the fish once they're added against any brown blood disease. Uh, basically brown blood disease is a nitrite poisoning. It affects the fish's ability to hold on to oxygen in their bloodstream. And yeah, they pretty much will die very quickly. So uh, swimming pool salt is the cheapest way to buy it. If you know someone who has a saltwater pool, grab a little bit off them because yeah, you don't really need a lot in an aquaponic system, generally speaking. So definitely something I would do at this point, uh, just to guard against any issues further on down the line. So rule of thumb at number nine, pretty much all goes hand in hand with number eight, cycling the system plant out the grow beds as soon as you start the cycling process. Now don't get too carried away though and plant out the whole system. Just a few leafy greens and herms will do to begin with because there's not going to be a lot of nutrients in the water. Now I would suggest you do add in a few extra elements because ammonia just isn't enough for plants. Um, I'd suggest you add in something like a kelp or seaweed based product. Here in Australia, we have additives like eco seaweed, which is a powder or sea salt, which is a liquid. And I think maxi crop for you folks over in America other places around, I'm sorry, I don't know of other brands worldwide. Now, what I like to do is I like to add in a tablespoon of the powdered kelp fertilizer per bed every week when starting off. And once the fish are added into the system, they'll start consuming food, creating more nitrate, and you'll see that show up in your test kit. And that's when you can start planting out more and more veggies to um, take up those extra nutrients. Talking about fish, that leads us on to the next rule of thumb, and that is feeding the fish via the satiation method. Now this is something that was explained to me by Bruce at Aussie Fish. There'll be a link below in the description to his YouTube channel and also to his um, hatchery website for you folks who are looking for some fingerlings. Now the satiation method basically means we're feeding the fish until they stop feeding. Now not everyone can stand around the tank every day and watch the fish feed uh, until they stop eating. Um, for me at the moment through the cooler months it's anywhere up to about 20 minutes. What I suggest you do is get a container with a known weight or volume of fish feed in it slowly add it into the fish tank and once the fish stop feeding eat no more weigh or measure the amount of food in the cup again subtract that from the original amount and that will give you a rough guesstimate of how much feed the fish are taking at one time you could do it over a series of days to get a bit of an average if you want to try and make it a little bit more accurate and that way you can just pull out that given amount of fish feed every day toss it in the tank and you'll be fairly confident that they're going to knock it over. Uh, do keep in mind though that as the fish do grow in size they will require more feed to aid the extra growth so it might be something you might need to just check back on on a you know a monthly basis just to see if you need to up the amount you're giving them daily. So rule of thumb number 11 if I've been counting correctly is keep an eye on the water parameters of your system that's the pH, the ammonia, the nitrite and the nitrate. Uh, definitely suggest that you test daily for the first week after you've added fish into the system until you're confident that they're all feeding well and everything looks to be going hunky-dory. Now a few days a week after that and then once you hit the, about the one month mark you could probably settle down to every second week to a month if you're comfortable that all the water parameters are staying nice and level. So there are two tests that I do on a daily basis here at the moment because it's winter I test the water temperature and yeah it's a little bit too low to feed the jade perch today 
it's only 18 degrees so they can wait until it warms up a bit. pH wise I like to make sure that my pH is always between the 6.5 and 7 pH range. That's a happy medium for both the fish and the plants and this will probably max out somewhere around about 6.7 to uh, seven I think today. Uh, just these meters just make it so much easier. It's just a press of a button and away you go. Uh, you can also get little pen uh, pH and temperature meters as well. And I definitely think they're a great investment because it's just a matter of coming out and um, yeah, pressing a button to get um, the, the results that you want rather than having to do a um, chemical test with the test kits. If you do notice the fish are going off their feed for whatever reason, do stop feeding immediately. Once you work out what's going on and you've sorted the situation out, then you can start feeding again. Um, but I would still just recommend that you start testing regularly again after that event, just to make sure everything's going smoothly. Now, I think that brings us on to rule of thumb number 12, which is get out there and enjoy the system. Uh, take the kids out, take the friends out, explain what's going on, um, ask the kids if they want to plant their favourite veggie in there. And if they don't like veggies, get them to plant a strawberry or two in there, something that they can harvest for themselves and enjoy and get them connected into the system. Uh, likewise, I would suggest that if your kid is old enough, that you bring them along when you harvest and process the fish. Uh, I really do think it's important the kids see the full cycle of um, where their food comes from. And if you're growing, you know, fish in the backyard, um, bring them along for the harvest if you think they're mature enough um, the harvest the cleaning even the prep itself show them how you cook it and I can guarantee you're going to be mighty chuffed that very first meal of fish you've harvested from the system with a side of salad from the aquaponics or from the veggie patch down the back definitely something for you to look forward to so I hope these rules of thumb have helped you aqua curious folks out or you folks have already got a system and just needed a couple of pointers. Uh, don't forget if you want more information, loads of videos on the channel and I also have that guide available for you to buy. $10 US, there will be a link definitely in the description and a little button will pop up at the end that will take you to our website and explain a little bit more about it. Uh, before I go, I really would like to thank you all for coming along and thumbing up the videos, leaving the comments and sharing them around with your family and friends. I really do appreciate it. It helps push the videos in the algorithms. Uh, for you folks who are helping to support the channel through the YouTube membership platform and Farm Your Own Yard website, I would like to thank you very much. Really do appreciate the ongoing support, folks. I will pretty much all leave it there, folks. I do hope your gardens and your aquaponics are booming and I will catch you next video. Cheers, folks, and happy growing.